directly or indirectly? Y se emite una orden de no contacto con la víctima, no pueden tener contacto con la persona, acercarse ni directa ni indirectamente. That means you may not contact the alleged victim in any way and no one else may contact the alleged victim for you. This also includes a prohibition of contact via electronic means such as email, text messages or social media. If I enter a no firearms order in your case, then you must relinquish all firearms that you own or possess to the sheriff's office as a condition of your release. Como condición de su puesta en libertad, yo podría emitir una orden donde tiene que entregar todas las armas que están en su poder. You have the right to remain silent. Everything you say today is being recorded and may be used against you. Tienen derecho a permanecer en silencio. Cualquier cosa que ustedes digan se puede usar en su contra más adelante. All right, we have Ms. Karimi from the state. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. All right, and we have Ms. Armpriester from the Public Defender's Office. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm just going to go right down the list for each room. And so if uh, I call your client's name, Mr. Levy or Mr. Gorman, just come on up. All right, uh, Ms. Creamy, I'm going to call the uh, docket if you'll announce the charges. Yes, Your Honor. All right, first is Jesse Otacha. Uh, He's here on a battery. All right, sir, do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you here today? All right, I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause comments on bond, Ms. Armpriester. All right, Ms. Uh, Karimi. Your Honor, this is domestic violence in nature want to bring to the court's attention in October of last year, he was arrested for domestic violence battery against the same victim. September of 2019, he had two arrests for domestic violence battery against the same victim. In September of 2019, he had a violation of pretrial release conditions on a different victim. And in 2019, he was the respondent in an injunction that involved a different victim. Um, in the October 2019 arrest, the judge set a bond of $2,500. The state's asking the court for a $7,500 bond in this case. Yeah, I've been told that he also qualifies for pretrial supervision. Uh, you may, everything's being recorded. All right. And I believe uh, someone just arrived for this case. Do you wish to be heard? All right. If you could step forward. Will you raise your right hand to be sworn? Yes. You state your name. Uh, and Ms. Gata, what would you like to inform the court? I don't know. I don't know. The police officer did not understand me yesterday. 
because of my English. Pero definitivamente aquí hubo un misunderstanding. Definitely, there was a misunderstanding. En ningún momento yo le levanté la mano o él me levantó a mí. At no point I raised my hand. Him, neither he raised his hand. Cuando nosotros lo discutimos, en un momento atrás donde estábamos discutiendo atrás en la puerta yo parece que estaba como que maría porque no quiero decir la palabra pero tengo la menstruación y ya yo me estaba sintiendo mal y yo casi como que me iba a ir para atrás y es cuando él me sujetó se lo traté de explicar al policía pero él no me entendía esa parte when we were having an argument behind the door You know, we, I was kind of a little bit busy already. I don't want to say, but I, I, I was uh, in the middle of the menstrual period. So when, when he got, when I approached me, I almost fell already. I tried to explain that to the police officer when they arrived. <laughs> Yeah, all what happened was an argument. That was it. He, when I told him that he grabbed me, he understood or he heard or was heard that he hit me. There was no hitting. It was just an argument. You can check on me anytime you want to have no bruises in my body. I didn't I didn't have a statement. Uh, I didn't make any statement because there was nothing. He, I told him not to call the police because at that point he was angry. And then this happened. This happened. The police officer did not understand me well because I don't speak perfect English. And look where we are now. Uh, Ms. Karimi, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. Ms. Armpriester, do you have any questions? Yes, Judge. Um, ma'am, do you have any evidence that you could point to that would show your safety around Mr. Atosha? No. I'm going to ask the translator and let him finish and then. Senorita, do you have any Temor, siento que miedo de estar cerca del señor. No, y el día que me siento así, yo tengo que tener el teléfono conmigo y yo le llamo a la policía. No, on the day, if there's a day I feel like that, I always have my phone with me. I will call the police. He was like, I'm going to call. Okay, ¿Está bien que regresaron? Yo no tengo nada que esconder, no hubo nada. No I don't have anything to hide, nothing happened. Yo no tengo ningún bruce ni nada, sino yo no estoy I have no bru I have no bruise on my body, otherwise I wouldn't be standing here. Ms. Green. Your Honor, I don't I don't have any follow-up questions. I, no, no, I would reiterate that this is the fourth incident in about a year and a half between this defendant and this victim. Okay. Ms. Karimi, could you re repeat that again? I'm sorry. I don't have any questions, follow-up questions for the victim. I would just reiterate that this is the fourth incident between this defendant and this victim in the last year and a half. Yeah, no tengo preguntas de seguimiento. Solo si quisiera decirle a la víctima que este es el cuarto, la cuarta situación que ocurre entre estas dos personas en el periodo de un año y medio. Y nosotros lo estábamos viendo uh, juntos uh, con sufrimiento y terapia, los dos. Y nada había, todo estaba perfectamente, nada había pasado. Ayer, pues, 
hubo un argumento que yo le dije, no llamo a la policía porque tú tienes la cabeza caliente. Si no, pues nada hubiese pasado. Y solamente porque él se enojó sobre algo que no tiene ni a ganas de explicarle algo de confianza en los hijos. Oh. We, we have been attending um, sessions and, and therapy. We were not having any problem whatsoever. It's just that it was just an argument what happened yesterday. And, you know, I told him not to call the police because he had a, hat, a hot head yesterday. I don't even want to say what was the argument or because he was silly. Ma'am, do you wish to have contact with Mr. Atocha? ¿Quieres tener contacto con el señor Atocha? Sí. Yes. Yes. Y si en algún momento yo tengo miedo a él o a mi niño, créeme que yo le llamo y no le hablo. Porque yo y mis hijos somos neutralidades. Y si en algún momento yo siento miedo por mí o por mis hijos, yo le llamo 911 porque mí y los hijos son las prioridades. Do you wish to have him return to your residence? Yes. All right, thank you. Gracias, señor. Can I go? You may. Gracias. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set bond at $3,000. Based on the testimony of Ms. Gada, I am not going to require a no contact order or a no trespass order. However, I <clears throat> However, I am going to require that if you own or possess any firearms that you relinquish those to the sheriff's office Ahora, prior to your release. And that you not possess or purchase firearms or ammunition during the pendency of this case. <inaudible> Uh, and the court is going to deny pretrial supervision. Your next court date, sir, is uh, February 1st at 8.30. Febrero primero, las 8 y 30, vuelta al tribunal. Thank you. Gata. G-A-T-A. All right, next is Brian Bain. He's here on a failure to appear from 2005. Where do you wish to have uh, the public defender appointed to represent you here today? Okay. All right. Well. Is that a yes or a no? Okay, I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause. Uh, Ms. Armprecht, are you aware of any reasons why the court should not leave it set at no bond? Yeah, this is one of my days, so more proper. All right, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, sir, I'm going to leave bond set at no bond. Your next court date is February 15th at 8.30. Thank you, sir. Next is Eric. Wait a minute. Next is Jorge Jimenez Martinez. Jorge Jimenez Martinez. He's here on domestic violence battery. <laughs> so do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you here today? Señor, 
Donde sea que es graduado a la presente hoy. Señor, que si necesita un abogado o desea que un abogado lo represente hoy. Señor, que habla además el español algún otra lengua maya o azteca. Español. Yes, I need an attorney for today. All right, I'll make a temporary appointment as a public defender. So you're currently utilizing the services of the court interpreter. Do you understand everything he's saying? I need an attorney for today. All right, I've already appointed one to represent you. Do you understand the court interpreter? Entiende usted al intérprete del tribunal. No, I don't. What is your primary language? ¿Cuál es su lengua materna o principal? Spanish. We're we're currently utilizing a Spanish interpreter. Do you understand him? En estos momentos estamos usando un intérprete de español. ¿Usted lo entiende? I understand. Yes. All right. And do you require the services of a Spanish interpreter? Necesita usted los servicios del intérprete de español. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. I'll make a finding that the defendant is entitled to an interpreter for the Spanish language. Estoy determinando que el detenido necesita los servicios del intérprete de un intérprete de español. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause. Yo revisé la declaración jurada, las razones fundadas y encontré que existen. Ms. Armpriester, any comments on bond? Ms. Grimmy. It was a thousand or fifteen hundred? Yeah, the uh, Ms. Armpriester requested 500. I believe he qualifies for pretrial supervision also. Um, Judge, I would ask for scheduled bond on the first degree misdemeanor, and as it's domestic violence, I have no additional information to provide to the court. Right, I'm going to set bond at $2,000. Or in the alternative, I will allow you to do pretrial supervision. I'm going to order that you not have any contact with the alleged victim whose name will be disclosed to you on the first appearance court order. No, estoy ordenando que no tenga contacto con la supuesta víctima cuyo nombre estaría revelado en la información del caso. As well as an order not to trespass at the residence uh, whose ad uh, the address of which will also be disclosed on the court order. También eh, tampoco podrás regresar a la dirección que aparece en la orden del tribunal. I will allow you to return to the residence one time within 72 hours of your release, accompanied with the sheriff's sea, officer, in order to collect a few personal belongings. Eh, le permitiré regresar al domicilio 72 horas después que sea puesto en libertad, acompañado de un oficial de la autoridad al recoger su pertenencia personal. I'm going to order that you relinquish all firearms that you own or possess prior to your release. Voy a 
and that you not possess or purchase firearms or ammunition during the pendency of this case. Durante, mientras el caso esté pendiente, usted ni compre armas ni munición. Your next court date is February 1st at 9 a.m. A las 9 de la mañana, febrero primero, a las 9 de la mañana, su regreso a los tribunales. Thank you, sir. Gracias, señor. All right, uh, let me go back. I skipped one, Eric uh, Erlinson. He's charged with violation of state probation. All right, uh, sir, do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you here today? Uh, no, Mr. Clark is not present. All right. Uh, I can make a temporary appointment of the public defender here today. You will need to reapply since this is a violation of probation. Mr. Erlinson, once you file that um, next application, we'll be able to come click off and get Ian appointed to your case. Okay, I was already Okay, well, we'll talk about it later. I just wanted to let you know that you have to reapply on this case. Okay, so then is he in front of that would be my attorney then, or is that what we've already talked about? He's not here today. It's not what I'm asking. He's telling me that if all the federal students are sending packages in person, because I was brought last year in the public defender's office, is uh, representing the person that brought me, so they couldn't uh, represent me, so that's why. Right, but what I'm saying is on all new charges, regardless that you have Ian on another case, you have to refill out an application for indigency so that he can be appointed on this new matter. Okay, and I did that, I got copy of that right here. Okay, it just takes, a couple days. I'll, I'll All right, I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause. Uh, I'm going to leave the bond set at no bond for the uh, warrant. Your next court date, sir, is February 3rd at 9 a.m. Thank you. Judge, um, back to Jesse Atosha. Did the court give him a nine o'clock arraignment date or an 8.30 arraignment date? I don't know. Because that should be, um, it needs to be a DV arraignment. Yeah, that would need to be a domestic violence arraignment date. Okay. What, what was the date that was given? February 1st. Oh, okay, then yes. If it was a Monday, then it should be. Who is that with? Oh, uh, yeah, I think Judge Provost does his at 8 30. Okay, thank you, Judge. I just wanted to check. Okay, no problem. All right, uh, let's go to Vincent Rainforth. He's charged with aggravated battery on a person 65 or older. All right. Sir, do you wish to have uh, the public defender appointed to represent you here today? All right. I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause. Uh, comments on bond, Ms. Armpriester? All right. Ms. Creamy? Um, yes, Judge, that's that's what the state would be requesting. All right, sir, I'm going to set bond at the scheduled amount of $5,000. I'm going to order you not to have any contact with the alleged victim whose name will be disclosed to you on the first appearance court order. I'm going to order that you relinquish all firearms that you own or possess prior to your release and that you not possess or purchase firearms or ammunition during the pendency of this case. I'm also going to order that you not possess or consume alcohol during the pendency of this case. Your next court date, sir, will be February 15th at 8.15. 
All right, thank you, sir. Flavio Santiago. Mr. Santiago is here on two counts of video voyeurism. The ages of the victims vary. All right, uh, Ms. Arm, uh, sir, do you wish to have me appoint the public defender to represent you here today? Yes. All right, I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. Go ahead, Ms. Arm. Yes, we would um, argue that there's a lack of Is there a lesser included offense that you're referencing? My issue with uh, count one is that it states the the statute states a person commits the offense if for his own amusement entertainment sexual arousement gratification or profit or for the purpose of degrading or abusing another person intentionally uses or installs an imaging device to secretly view broadcast or record a person without that person's knowledge and consent um Based on the probable cause affidavit, it, it appears that Mr. Santiago's son knew, had knowledge of the camera, knew its whereabouts. And correct, and even talked to him through the camera. Ms. Creamy? Your Honor, someone under the age of 18 cannot give consent legally. So while, while he may have been aware of it, he is a minor child and cannot consent to such activity, especially in his mother's home. I would advise not. That's your response. You may. If oh. there were allegations that were lewd and sexual in nature, I could see a different perspective. However, this was Mr. Santiago trying to protect his son. His son knew that the camera was there for his safety, not for anything sexual or amusement in nature as to that part of the statute. Your Honor, the jury instructions for video voyeurism, it's not solely for sexual arousal. There's amusement, right. entertainment, sexual arousal, gratification, or profit, or for the purpose of degrading or abusing the victim. None of that took place here, Judge, nor is that contained in the four corners of this document. It was I think I think you can absolutely be inferred that someone who is no longer in a relationship with this victim installed, unbeknownst to her, cam multiple cameras oh. in her house. I don't, I don't have a problem with probable cause as it relates to the child's mother. Give me a moment here.
the jury instruction number, Ms. Creamy? Judge, uh, you have to look at both um, 11.13C and 11.13H. Because for the, the child, it basically says you, you look at elements one through seven in 11.13C, and then you also add in the additional elements from 11.13H, which talks about the age of the victim. Eleven point one three C and H. Oh, I'm sorry, maybe not. I'm not C. I, I apologize. Uh, I think I opened the wrong one. I did. I opened the dissemination one. It's 11.13A as an apple. Actually, on H, Your Honor, it says at the time defendant, and there's four options. The very first one being viewed, broadcasted, or recorded victim. The second one talks about used an imaging device to secretly view, broadcast, or record the victim. I do agree with the state that the minor would not be able to give consent based on the fact that it's not the child's home and it's not the father's home. I'm gonna go ahead and find probable cause for each offense. Comments on bond? Ms. Creamy, I'll let you go first. Um, Your Honor, the state is going to ask for 25,000 per count and no contact with the victim and any contact with the minor child needs to go through Children's Advocacy Center. Uh, count two is a third degree felony. Uh, I'd have to look it up, Judge. I'm sorry. Yes, Judge. Third degree felony. All right. 
Uh, comments on bond, Ms. Armbruster? Yeah, the Disney Services LMAC would ask for the scheduled $5,000 no objection to the no contact with the child's mother. However, we do object to involving the Silver Jacket City Center and the contact with his son. Again, there is nothing lewd or anything about his interaction with his son. It's only involved that. It seems like it was a disgrace on the child's mother. Mr. Santiago has no prior arrest record, is that correct? I could not find any, but... That's the information I have, Your Honor. I don't want to set bond on count one at $5,000. I'm going to set bond on count two at $10,000. I'm going to order that he not have any contact with the alleged victim whose name will be disclosed to him on the court order, as well as uh, any contact uh, with his child will be through the Children's Advocacy Center. Uh, no trespass at the victim's home whose address will be disclosed on the first appearance court order. I'm going to order that you relinquish any firearms that you own or possess prior to your release and that you not possess or purchase firearms during the pendency, firearms or ammunition during the pendency of this case. So your next court date will be February 15th at 8.30. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll call Matthew Mullins next. Mullins is here on a battery. All right, Mr. Mullins, do you wish to have the public defender appointed to represent you here today? All right, we'll proceed without an attorney then. I've reviewed the probable cause. I find uh, probable cause affidavit, and I find probable cause. Ms. Karimi comments on bond. Your Honor, he actually has a prior battery uh, where he did receive a withhold in 2017. However, that would qualify for this to be a battery two or more, third degree felony. I'm asking for a $5,000 bond in light of that. He has a prior battery, wouldn't that disqualify him from pretrial supervision? Any comments on pretrial supervision? Um, yes, Judge, I would object to pretrial in this case. All right, Mr. Mullins, any comments you have regarding uh, bond or pretrial supervision? Do you have any comments as to the amount of bond I should set or whether or not to allow you to do pretrial supervision? Uh, Correct, that's me. Okay. All right, I'm gonna set bond at $2,000. I'm not gonna allow you to do pretrial supervision. I'm going to order that you not have any contact with the alleged victim whose name will be disclosed to you on the first appearance court order that you not trespass at the alleged victim's address, whose address will be disclosed to you on the court order. I will permit you to return to the residence one time accompanied with the sheriff's office officer within 72 hours of your release in order to collect a few personal belongings. I'm going to order that you uh, relinquish all firearms that you own or possess prior to your release and that you not possess or purchase firearms or ammunition during the pendant of this case. I'm also going to order that you not possess or con consume alcohol during dependency of this case. Your next court date will be February 1st at 9 o'clock. Thank you, sir. All right. I think we're ready to move on. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll move to the next room. All right, which case do you have? Okay, we'll try to call that one then. Although it does say on here to call last. <laughs> so that means they're probably not in the room. Yeah, they have so many people in the room.
think I'm sworn. Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Judge Blake Adams. You're here for first appearance. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, then I will appoint one to represent you. When we call your name, you will be advised of the charge or charges pending against you. I will determine whether there was probable cause for your arrest and address the conditions of your pretrial release. If a no contact order is issued in your case, then you may not have any contact with the alleged victim or victims directly or indirectly. That means you may not contact the alleged victim in any way and no one else may contact the alleged victim for you. This also includes a prohibition of contact via electronic means such as email, text messages, or social media. If I enter a no firearms order in your case, then you must relinquish all firearms that you own or possess prior to your release as a, con uh, as a condition of your pretrial release. You have the right to remain silent. Everything you say today is being recorded and may be used against you. We have Ms. Karimi from the state attorney's office via Zoom. We have Ms. Armpriester from the public defender's office in our courtroom. Uh, Naples Jail, you don't happen to have Ronald Coyle there, do you? No, Your Honor, not yet. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, do you know uh, if anyone here needs the sign language interpreter? Okay. Okay. It must be cold in there. Okay. Uh, let's call Patricia Franklin. She's here on a violation of state probation. Okay, we'll proceed in her absence. I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause for each offense. I'm going to hold her no bond. Uh, pursuant to Judge Martin's warrants on each count. Her next court date will be January 28th at 10 a.m. All right, uh, Tarek uh, Bishur. Did I pronounce that correctly? All right, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Creamy. Oh, Your Honor, he's charged with possession of marijuana, less than 20 grams and possession of paraphernalia. All right, sir, do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you here today? All right, I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause for each offense. Ms. Armpriester, any comments on that? Okay, uh, Ms. Karimi. I have no comments, Your Honor. All right, sir, I'm going to a bond at $2,000 on each offense. Your next court date will be February 11th at 8.30. All right, thank you. All right, uh, next is John Michelson. He's charged with possession of paraphernalia, less than 20 grams and possession of I'm sorry, possession of marijuana, less than 20 grams and possession of paraphernalia. All right, sir, do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you here today? All right, I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find probable cause for each offense. Ms. Arm, increase your comments on bond. For each offense. Ms. Karimi. No comments, Your Honor. All right, all set. I'll set bond at $2,000 on count one and I'll set bond at $2,000 on count two. Sir, your next court date is February 11th at 8.30. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> when they're ready, Mr. Levy, we should be able to call yours first. Thank you. 
All right. Do we have someone there who uh, requires a, a sign language interpreter? someone who may have needed one over the weekend. Okay. I, I don't see that name on the first appearance docket or the 215 docket. No. It was on Sunday. <laughs> well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. I also think he was ROR'd. He was released. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's call. Uh, well, we probably have to have these people. Could I have the defendants uh, stand and raise their right hand to be sworn by the clerk? Do you tell me clear or firm testimony you give shall be the truthful truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. All right. Thank you. you may be seated. All right, good afternoon, everyone. You're here for first appearance. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, then one will be appointed to represent you. When we call your name, you'll be advised of the charge or charges pending against you. I will determine whether there was probable cause for your arrest and address the conditions of your pretrial release. If a no contact order is issued in your case, then you may not have any contact with the alleged victim or victims directly or indirectly. That means you may not contact the alleged victim in any way and no one else may contact the alleged victim for you. This also includes a prohibition of contact via electronic means such as email, text messages, or social media. If I enter a no firearms order in your case, then you must relinquish all firearms that you own or possess to the sheriff's office as a condition of your release. You have the right to remain silent. Everything you say today is being recorded and may be used against you. We have Ms. Karimi for the state and Ms. Arm Priester from the Public Defender's Office. And let's go with uh, Ronald Coyle first. Mr. Coyle is here on a violation of pretrial release condition. All right. And we have Mr. Levy present for Mr. Uh, Coyle. All right. Well, I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. I find uh, probable cause comments on bond. I don't have comments as to bond in this case, but I do have motions to revoke bond in other cases. I don't know if you want me to make them now or later. Uh, go ahead. Your Honor, he currently has the ability to post bond in two separate cases, 20 CF 1683 and 20 MM 2004. And with these new charges, that's a violation of his bond condition. So I'm asking the court to revoke his ability to post bond in both of those cases. Response, Mr. Levy. Uh, Judge, not at this time. I am understanding he's got a violation of probation order already in the criminal bond anyway. So, well, we could, no, I don't have any additional comment on those cases. But. All right. All right. As it relates to the uh, current case, I'll set bond at $2,000. I need to do another no contact order, Ms. Karimi? Yes, Your Honor, the state would request another no contact order and it can be modified by the trial judge should the defense want that modification. I understand, Ms. Karimi, based on that, Judge, I would just, again, if the court 
is our argument that I was requested that we be permitted to have electronic contact as to per Judge Foster's order. So there's currently one case where he's going to be able to have this electronic contact, and, and now there would be another case where he's not, this case, if your honor decides to, uh, to put in any no contact order that, so I guess that would kind of contradict the order of the January 8th of Judge Foster. We have two competing orders. Right. And if I may, Your Honor, Judge Foster wasn't aware of violations at the time that he modified the order. I agree, but I know that the, uh, the, the legislature in that case testified extensively and was cross-examined by the state. Um, and a lot of that testimony came out where she insisted on having contact with, with the legislature, or with the defendant in this case. All right, give me a moment here. Well, I think based on the probable cause affidavit and the fact that there were an alleged 86 phone calls made covering 887 minutes prior to Judge Foster's order that would have allowed him limited contact, I'm not so sure the outcome would have been the same. So... I'm going to order that he not have any contact with the alleged victim. Hang on a second, Your Honor. This is not made to serve. Is it? Is it outrageous? Mr. Coyle, I got to tell you, I'm being very cautious. I'll have Mr. Berry do a video communication with you today or as soon as possible. I just, I got to tell you, I understand your frustration. This is not the time to deal with it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Levy. All right. So your next court date is... February 1st at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Well, I'll have Mr. Berry get in touch with you today or early tomorrow. And as it relates to the state's motion to revoke pretrial release in case numbers 20 CF 1683 and 20 MM 204, that motion is granted. Thank you. There's no discussion. Thank you. You too. All right. Uh, next is Mr. Gorman. Are you here on a 215 docket? Okay. All right. Well, give me one moment here. Uh, Joseph Owens. All right. We'll proceed in his absence. Your Honor, Mr. Owens is here on a violation of pretrial release condition. All right. I'll make a temporary appointment of the public defender. I've reviewed the probable cause affidavit. Ms. Armpriester, any comments as to probable cause? No, Justice Thomas. I'm sure those conditions are in the condition that Your Honor would stack in the time period on the motion to revoke. Ms. Freeman? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear her request, Your Honor. She was requesting that we set bond in this case. Well, Judge, I think the court would need to set bond. This is one, two, three, his fourth arrest for violation of pretrial release condition. And one, two, as many weeks. He keeps violating the no contact orders. This violation was, as the court read, 
he called some he called the victim from somebody another inmate's account so he is doing what he can to avoid complying with all of the court's previous orders to not speak with the victim all right uh i'm going to set bond in the current case at two thousand dollars your honor i would ask that the court revoke his ability to post bond in 21 mm 70. any response judge i would ask that the bond amount stand um, right in the current case i'm also going to issue a no contact order with the alleged victim uh, I'm also signing a order that re he relinquish any firearms that he owns or possesses and not possess or purchase firearms or ammunition during the pendency of this case. Uh, his next court date for this case, case will be February 1st at 8.30. As it relates to the state's motion to revoke pretrial release in case number 21NM70, that motion is denied. All right. Uh, that brings us to Christopher Romano. Your Honor, Mr. Romano is here for a battery by a person detained. Sir, do you wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you here today? Okay. So, Miss uh, Mr. Yeah, Urs, Mr. So Urs, do you want to want me to continue it to tomorrow? I, I I can't wait a week or two. I can I can roll it to tomorrow and see if Mr. Osterbahn shows up tomorrow. Okay. All right. I'll order that uh, Mr. Romano re be held and returned to 24th tomorrow. Thank you, Ms. Armpriester. You don't need to. You know, just hang on to it. Your Honor, could you hang on to the bond revocation order until tomorrow? Yes, I've got everything. I'm going to hang on to it. Thank you. All right. Um, and then Mr. Velez Rendon bond, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, let me know when you're ready for the 215 docket. Uh, I think I've got everybody in the Zoom room. I'm not showing anyone in the waiting room. What's the name? No, she's in there. Yes, she is. Judge, can we handle the ones um, that were not rollovers first and then Miss Bonilla can pick up whatever was left over from this morning? Okay. Mr. Gorman, are you ready? Yes, Judge. Uh, uh, Judge uh, Michael Avakin. Okay. Uh, Judge, uh, thank you again for accommodating us. Uh, Mr. Avakin has some medical issues, so we will uh, able him to get out and get some additional medical treatment. Uh, we worked out a resolution with Ms. Bonilla, the negotiation. Uh, and this is 20 mm 1395 is that he would receive a withhold of adjudication he'd be placed on six months of probation he'd have to complete a substance abuse evaluation follow all recommendations he's subject to random testing pay all court costs and costs of prosecution uh, and he may petition to early terminate in the future depending on when that is uh, will be dependent on what goes on with his other case judge he's got a pending felony as well uh, but uh, 
that's the, the negotiation our people have with. Okay. Um, so, Judge, does indicate that early termination can happen at four months. Uh, and I had some additional conversation with Ms. Benita that that could be earlier, again, depending on what happens with the felony case. Uh, but well, I'll deal with that when we, when we get to that point, Judge. Uh, uh, I, I'm sure Ms. Benita will be handling the motion early term, and she's got notes, and we've got correspondence to deal with that at that time. So... So, Judge, even if it says it, I, I'm, I'm just comfortable bringing the motion based on my discussion. If I don't want to jam this up because this is going to uh, result in, uh, in him getting out. So, uh, whatever it may be, it may be, Judge, but I, I'm, I've got correspondence with Ms. Benita to bring that motion in the future at the appropriate time, maybe after that's, four months. So. That's fine. That's fine, Judge. Okay. So, are we saying at early termination at four months? And if it's before then, Mr. Gorman can bring his emails your honor we can just say six months probation and mr gorman can file a motion at the appropriate time okay right. so will you raise your right hand to be sworn we firmly swear or firm testimony of your shall be the truth the full truth and nothing but the truth thank you sir will you state your name And Mr. Avakian, what's your date of birth? Right. Did you hear the offer that your attorney placed on the record? I did, Your Do you have any questions about that offer? No, Do you wish to accept that offer? Yes, sir. Are you pleading guilty or no contest? No contest. Have you read a plea form or has one been explained to you? All right. Did you have an opportunity to review that? Uh, yes. All right. All right. Did you have any questions about any of the rights listed on that form? All right. And you understand that you're waiving those rights by entering your plea? Yes, sir. All right. Do you understand that your plea will be used against you in a deportation proceeding if you're not a United States citizen? Yes, sir. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? Are you? Uh, okay. And that's not affecting your ability to understand the proceedings? Yes, sir. All right. And are you suffering from any mental illness? Are you satisfied with your attorney's advice? Yes, sir. Have they done everything that you've requested? Yes. All right. Ms. Creamy, any additional questions? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Gorman, we stipulate to venue and a factual basis for the plea? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Avakian, I'll accept your plea. Find it knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently entered on a factual basis and in your best interest withhold adjudication, place you on probation for a period of six months, require, to, require you to complete a substance abuse evaluation, follow all recommendations, and be subject to random testing at your own expense. I'm going to impose all court costs, including costs of prosecution. You'll need to check in with probation uh, when you're released from custody. If you're released before five o'clock, you'll have to come over here to the courthouse located on the first floor. If you're not released by five o'clock, you'll have to check in in the morning, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank Gorman. Thank you for accommodating us, Judge. Uh, Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you too. When we get out, all right? Thanks for your patience. Oh, today. thank you, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's it. All right. And uh, what other case do we need to address than Ms. Karimi? I think uh, Arturo Jose Martinez, 20MM1994, it's a motion uh, to reduce right. bond, I think, or separate. All right. Do we have Mr. Martinez there? Okay. Yes. Sir, will you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you tell me swear or affirm testimony you give shall be the truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth? All right, this is case number 20MM1994 with Ms. Armpriester. I believe, Ms. Armpriester, you have a motion. All 
right? Who would you like to call first? Um, Judge, if you could call Ms. Martinez first. All right, uh, Ms. Martinez, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. All right, will you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Arm Priester. That's okay, I'm waiting for you to That's fine. Um, Ms. Martinez, can you please state your full name? Maria Elena Martinez. And how are you related to my client, Arturo? He is my brother. And, um... Can you please inform the court of what's happened in your and your brother's life the last 24 hours? Um, my mother has passed away as of yesterday. Um, she passed away and, uh, you know, we're going through a hard situation right now. What did your mother pass away from? Uh, COVID-19. Um, ma'am, is it your hope that your brother can be at your mother's funeral? That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Is it your hope that he can assist you in planning her funeral? Yes. Ma'am, you understand that your brother's charged with a crime in Collier County, Florida, isn't that correct? Yes. And you understand that if the judge were to reduce his bond, your brother would be responsible for coming to court and meeting with me, his attorney, correct? That's correct, yes, ma'am. Would you be willing and able to assist him should he need it in dealing with his court priorities and obligations? Yes. Ms. Martinez, have you already reached out to a bondsman? No, ma'am. I have yet. Are you able to contact a bondsman? I am, yes. Right now, I'm in the middle of the situation of trying to buy a, a land for my mom, and I got to go to the courthouse and pay money there for the land, and I'm trying to do this right now, but I'm, I was waiting for y'all to see if we know where the bond may be. I can bail them out today. And ma'am, I know you and I have already spoken, but for the record, you're able to post um, the bond on what would be a $5,000 bond, correct? Yes. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell the judge? No, if he could, uh, you know, please, you know, reduce the bond so my younger brother can be with us. There's only three of us and he's the only one that's missing. And I would like for him to attend, you know, the funeral with my mother. You know, he's my baby brother. He's the last one. And it's, it's very hard. It's very hard to go through this. Not now, not now, Arturo. You'll get your turn. All right, uh, Ms. Karimi, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. All right. All right, thank you, ma'am. You can stay on uh, if you'd like. All right, uh, Ms. Armpriester, uh, you can call your next witness. It'll be Mr. Arturo Martinez, Judge. All right, go ahead. Mr. Martinez, please state your name. Arturo Martinez. You can put your hand down. Um, and Mr. Martinez, you understand that you're charged with a crime in misdemeanor court, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you understand that if the court were to set your bond, you would have to be involved in the court process and stay in touch with me, your attorney, correct? Yes, ma'am. I'll follow anything that has been told. Despite the unfortunate hardship of losing your mother, you also understand that you would have to have a place to live and um, and live without violating the law, correct? Correct. Ma'am. Where would you live? I'll be at a grocery store on South Street. I have no trespassing there, but my sister, my sister, uh, they took out the trash bags to Austin, so I'm allowed to go back to my house. With your sister, Ms. Martinez? Yes, ma'am. And um, are you able to get a job? Yes, ma'am. And what are you um, able to get a job in? Doing what? Paperwork, How long have you lived in Collier County, Mr. Martinez? All my life. Which is how long? And you're aware that your bond is currently set at $20,000? Yes, ma'am. Are you able to afford that amount of bond? Yes, ma'am. Are you able to work with your sister and family and afford bond in the amount of $5,000? Yes, ma'am. Judge, I have no further questions. Ms. Creamy, any questions? 
Mr. Martinez, isn't it true that you were convicted three times last year of violation of DV injunction against the same victim? Yes, she... yes or no, Arturo? Uh, Your Honor, if she could be permitted to answer the question. Go ahead, Mr. Martinez, answer the question. And, and the charge that you're facing today was the offense date was December 7th, 2020, correct? Your Honor, I have no further questions. Can you... Can I explain myself, Your Honor? Uh, it's not necessary, Arturo. Can he redirect? Just argument. Okay. Uh, State, have any witnesses they'd like to call? No, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Armpriester. Your Honor, despite my client's um, allegations in this case and his criminal history, the bond in this case for a misdemeanor violation of injunction is unusually high at $20,000. He is indigent. He does not afford that. Then. Even $5,000 is high for this case. However, that is what he can afford. And in light of his history, I understand that his mom would be slightly elevated. Judge, in light of the fact that his mom passed away yesterday, his family would like to have him at the funeral. He would like to be at his mother's funeral. He is the youngest of three. Um, judge, we're not asking for anything other than his ability to post bond. He would still have to follow all the conditions of being out on bond. Um, and I've gone over with him the importance of following your honors, no contact, no trespass orders, um, and that bond can be revoked very quickly. So judge, uh, the long and short of it is the bond in this case is egregiously high. He's indigent and facing more hardship, and we think $5,000 bond is more than sufficient to ensure his return to court. Uh, Ms. Kareem, before I give you an opportunity to respond, Ms. Armpriester, let me ask you, Mr. Uh, Martinez indicated that he would return to 1312 Pear Street in Immokalee, but I'm looking at the first appearance court order, and that is where he is trespassed from. Um, Your Honor, in that situation, he would have to find another place to go, or we would ask um, the you have the no trespass list if, if his sister who's under oath and that's her residence, and I believe she did already indicate that he would stay with her. What's her last name? Martinez. Ms. Martinez, are you still on the line with us? Yes, sir, I am. Do you live at 1312 Pear Street? Yes, I'm staying there, yes. Does the alleged victim in this case live at that address? No, she don't. As um, I had spoke to Deputy Wolf back uh, back in December when all this happened, and I have uh, posted two letters on the doors that she has been evicted, and she had till January 2nd to respond back. She has um, left the property, and we have not seen her since. So, you know, she don't live there no more. She don't have nothing to do at my mother's house that is my mother's house and that's where i'm staying and she she uh left the place and she never came back and we don't know nothing about her okay any questions from ms armpriester or ms karimi for ms martinez in light of the court's questions one follow-up go ahead Ms. Martinez, you stated that you did follow through the procedure of having that individual evicted Yes, um, we do have, if she was to step foot in the yard, there is no trespassing towards her, which if she was to step the yard, she will be picked up and arrested. There is Thank a case that on that already. No further questions. Any questions, Ms. Karimi? No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, all right, response, Ms. Karimi? You mean argument? Or argument, yes. Uh, Your Honor, he pled to violation of injunction in Hendry County with the same victim, November of 2020. The offense date was August of 2020. I'm sorry, August 18th, 2020. And then August 25th, 2020, he had another offense of violation of injunction that he pled to in November of 2020, again in Hendry County. Earlier this year, March, 2020 in Collier County, he pled to, or he had, he committed violation of injunction against the same victim, which he pled to in May of this year. 
I think at this point, Your Honor, the heightened bond is due to the fact that he cannot follow court orders, period. He can't follow an injunction. He can't follow a no contact order. And so the $20,000 bond we'd ask the court to maintain as it is for the protection of the victim at this point. Furthermore, Your Honor, um, the defense has the ability to file a motion to allow for him to attend the funeral at the time that it is scheduled. And that would have to be coordinated with the court and with the sheriff's office. So there are ways for him to be able to attend it without lowering a bond. But I'd ask the court to maintain the bond and deny the motion. All right. Anything else, Ms. Armprieska? Yes, Judge. Mr. Martinez is here on allegations. He is innocent until proven guilty. Even though he does have a criminal history, which the defense um, chief didn't try to hide, we, we brought it to the court's attention. He is still entitled to bond. He's entitled to a bond that is reasonable. $20,000 on this case after he has spent nearly 30, 40 days in custody is not reasonable, Judge especially in light of the other circumstances which his sister has testified to on the record as well as he has testified to on the record. Um, here in this instance, um, and for purposes of setting bond, we're not here for trial, this is not a bench trial, this is bond. I don't hear any prior failures to appear. Um, again, he has served about 40 days in. I think it's appropriate that the bond be reduced. Is the injunction case, is that here in Collier County or is that Hendry County? There was um, one in Hendry, which I believe is the You mean the, where was the injunction issued? Correct. I would have to look that up, Judge. Give me one second. <laughs> the injunction is issued here in Collier County. You have a case number? Yes, 20 DR All right, having heard argument from both sides as well as testimony from the witnesses, the court is going to uh, grant in part and deny in part uh, defendant's motion. The court is going to grant in part as follows. Bond will be reduced to $10,000. All prior pre-trial conditions ordered at the first appearance court on December 8th shall remain in effect except for the no trespass order at 1312 Pear Street shall be removed. as a condition of his pretrial release, he is to enroll in a batterer's intervention program within 10 days of his release. 
and that is pursuant to the order in 20 DR 619. Can you get in touch with me, Mr. Martinez? I can put that information in your hands. Ms. Armpriester, would you like to prepare the proposed order? I absolutely can, Judge. I'll send it to Ms. Cleaney. And then get it to me? Yes. Okay. Can All right. Just so I'm clear, so my recommendation? Yes. Um, um, we're going to have two oh, oh, I guess one. So it's going to be granted as to the reduction. And denied as to why. I'm basically not getting the amount that I asked for, which was five. Okay. Correct. Okay. So ten thousand dollar bond. No contact order will remain in effect. However, the no trespass order will be removed. Counties to enroll in Better's intervention program within how many days did I say? Ten days. Pursuant to 20 DR 619. Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. May I say something? Yes. Um, I know you you lower down the bond to ten thousand, but to be fair and, and, and honest with you, right now I'm trying to. I set up a account for a GoFundMe account because to bury my mom they want at least sixteen thousand. I don't have that much money, so I'm trying to collect from my mother and I'm trying to collect from my brother. Can you do something? more honor that would help us i would really appreciate it uh, Ms. martinez i am sympathetic to your plight and i am very sorry about the passing of your mother um this is probably the best i can do in light of the circumstances and in light of um the history that has been presented for mr martinez and and this victim so i apologize if um that's not enough I'll be in touch with you, okay? All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Bye bye. All right. Thank you, Anna. I'll prepare the order. All right, thank you. Maybe. You may. Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to the case of Michael Ashton. Is that the plea? It was a plea. That was the one with Mr. Gorman. Yes, that was the one with Mr. Gorman. Yes. yes. All right, thank you. And then Mr. Barry is here. Yes, we did. Mr. Levy was here. Mr. Levy was here. Oh, because we don't work in. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Barry. All right. Okay. All right. All right. That we're not done. We got two more cases. Oh, we do? Yeah. But I think one of them is. Are you sure? I don't think we have anybody else at the jail. Oh. All right, let me go to um, Attorney McLean. Just Attorney Dart. Dart. No, Good okay. afternoon, Mr. Right. McLean. Oh, actually, don't we have some in the market? Where did my list go? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. With the jailer? I think we're done with the jail. Okay. Mr. McLean, we're here on Raymond Mershon, case number 20 CT 2332. Yes, Your Honor. This will be uh, a plea. Is Mr. Mershon present or is there a plea in abstention? Mr. Mershon is in, in custody. Oh, then we do need the jail. <laughs> Um, he was not listed on my, oh, yeah, it's showing he should be in the 24th room. What's his name? Mershon, M-E-R-S-C-H-E-N. Three, four, hold it. They have him listed on the 215 from the jail. Mershon, he's supposed to be, do you know what room he's at? I believe he's he is in uh, quarantine at the moment. If that changes so, anything, that could change something. Are they waiting on us over there? Okay. Is he there? 
We gotta go back to the other courtroom. I've never done it this way before. I always thought the police were in the last court. I thought I was supposed to say work too. Maybe because he's in isolation. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, sir, will you raise your right hand to be sworn by the clerk? We shall be swear or affirm that we be shall be the truth, full truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, thank you, sir. All right, uh, Mr. McLean, what are the uh, terms of the offer? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor I, if, I'm sorry, Your Honor, if I may, Miss Bunny is going to handle the rest of the docket. All right, thank you, Miss Karimi. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you, Your Honor. You too. Your Honor, Mr. Mr. Mercer will withdraw his previously entered not guilty plea and enter a plea of no contest. Your Honor, in exchange for that plea of no contest, the agreement with the state pending your approval would be the following. He would plead to one count of DUI property damage, adjudicated guilty, $750 fine, 12 months of probation, but may early term at nine months, 12 month driver's license suspension, DUI school, uh, uh, substance abuse evaluation to follow recommended treatment, no possession, consumption of alcohol or drugs, 10 day vehicle impound, 50 hours of community service. It also is a special condition, Your Honor, would be required to have 60 days of the Soberlink device. Also, have to have the victim impact panel, court costs, and costs of pros prosecution. Your Honor, additionally, uh, Mr. Mercer is a resident of Pennsylvania. We'd ask that he be able to. Uh, be instructed and report remotely. Judge, the plea offer in this case is correct and the state has no objection to mail and probation. All right, give me one moment. Mr. McLean, are you aware of any reason why Pennsylvania wouldn't accept a transfer of probation? No, Your Honor, I, I, I don't know of any, any reason. I know that sometimes misdemeanors are uh, cumbersome, but um, I don't see any issue. Ms. Bonilla, you're okay with just mail-in probation? <clears throat> yes, Judge. All right. Uh, Mr. Mershon, were you able to hear the terms of the offer that your attorney just placed on the record? Did you have any questions about those terms? All right. Do you wish to accept that offer to resolve your case today? Are you pleading guilty or no contest? Have you read a plea form or has one been explained to you? Did you understand all of the rights listed on that form? You understand that you're waiving those rights by entering your plea today? You understand that your plea will be used against you in a deportation proceeding if you're not a United States citizen? Are you under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or medication? Are you suffering from any mental illness? Do you understand that driving under the influence with damage to person or property is a first degree misdemeanor? punishable by a maximum sentence of one year in the county jail. You understand that you're being placed on probation and if you violate probation, you could be subjected to one year in the county jail with uh, and with uh, 
credit for any time you may have already served. And knowing that you still wish to enter your plea. All right, do you understand that DUI is an enhanceable offense, meaning you could be facing higher fines, higher penalties, more jail time, or a longer loss of a driver's license if convicted of this offense in the future? Yes, sir. You understand that in some circumstances, DUI is a felony? Yes, sir. All right. Are you satisfied with your attorney's advice? Has he done everything that you've requested? Yes, All right, any additional questions, Ms. Bonilla? No questions, Your Honor. All right, any questions for you, Mr. McLean? No, Your Honor. All right. All right, Mr. Mercia, and I'll accept your plea. Find it knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently entered upon a factual basis and in your best interest to adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 12 months of probation. You may apply for early term termination after serving nine months, provided all conditions have been satisfactorily met. I'll impose a $750 fine, 12-month driver's license revocation. As conditions of probation, you must complete a 10-day vehicle impoundment, the appropriate DUI school, one victim impact panel, 50 hours of community service, 60 days of sober link, which must be installed prior to your I say prior to his release, do we know when he'll get that installed? Or are we saying within so many days of his release? I would say, Your Honor, upon release from the jail uh, to sign up for the sober league or when he starts, or when he starts probation. Well, he will technically be on probation today once I enter the judgment and sentence. Can we ask for 48 hours to sign up for Soberlink, get it installed? Uh, right. And that 48 hours would extend the 60 days by 48 hours. Any no objection? objection with that, Your Honor. All right, uh, 60 days of Soberlink. You must uh, obtain the Soberlink device within 48 hours of your release. There would be a no possession or consumption of alcohol provision. That means you cannot consume alcohol while you're on your prob on probation. You can't have alcohol in your residence. You cannot go anywhere that primarily sells alcohol, such as bars, taverns, saloons, or packaged liquor stores. You must undergo a substance abuse evaluation, follow all recommendations. You'll be subject to random testing and at your own expense. Did I say 50 hours of community service? All right. Uh, you must check in with probation upon your release from the courthouse. Uh, if that is not before five o'clock today, is there anything holding them here today besides this offense? Mr. McLean? I am not aware of anything. I know he does have other issues. However, I believe that uh, there is bond for those other issues. All right. Uh, I'll allow you to check in with probation within 24 hours of your release. All court costs, including costs of prosecution, shall be imposed. I didn't. And I will allow you to do mail-in probation uh, from Pennsylvania. However, sir, you still have to check in with the Collier County probation before you head out of state, okay? Within 24 hours of your release, located here on the first floor of the courthouse. All right, anything else? Did I miss anything? Okay, without response. All right, thank you, Mr. Mersh, and thank you, Mr. McLean. Thank you, Your Honor, have a good day. Thank you, you too. Thank you, Naples Jail. That should be it. I think right. that's it, uh, Your Honor. <laughs> yes, we've, we've got uh, Mr. Amster with us. Give me one moment to review that judgment and sentence. Brings us to 
uh, Alexis Barkley, 15 CT 3122, with Mr. Amster. Morning, afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, afternoon. I should have seen you this morning. I apologize for that. It's all right. Uh, Your Honor, I filed an affidavit of abstention. I don't know if the court sees it. It was filed this morning. Uh, I do not see a plea in absentia in the court file, Madam Clerk. I've got the notice. Are you showing anything in the pending? Can you say Yes. In the queue. We have things that are considered ASAP, so when they try to divvy those out, I don't think it's in the file. Ramster, do you have a copy of that with you on your computer? Um. <laughs> Oh, one, so, one second, Your Honor, I apologize. Uh, Your Honor, um, yeah, I can pull that up in a second. I have the, I have the filing number. Um, would you like me to try to share? I've never done it before, but. Yes, give me one moment. All right, you should be able to share now. All right, I, I've never done it, so I apologize. Let me, uh, oh, share, con okay. Um, one, one second, let me make it a photo real quick, Judge. One second. Mr. Amster, I think you've muted my, your mic. Are you able to see that now? I... No, you should be able to, if you pull up the document and then go to share screen and it'll give you- There we go, that. Okay, let's take a look. to that uh, let me Thank you. 
Can't, for some reason, I cannot seem to uh, get the bottom, but it is notarized, Your Honor. Um, you have fingerprints? No, I did not. I've never, I've never had to do that. I haven't been before, Your Honor, in the past, and I apologize that I've, uh, I've still got a little. I've got my Dade County blood in me here, Judge, and we don't, uh, we're not as formal, unfortunately. That's just the standard one I've used for 27 years. Ms. Benita? Yes, Judge, I would ask that, um, because obviously the, uh, I think what defense counsel meant to file was a plea in absentia, and we do not have that. I think he needs to um, get fingerprints and additional information to, so that we can resolve this case correctly. So I'm just gonna ask, uh, I have no objection to a continuance at this time. Your Honor, I could have I, I, I could have sworn that last time we were here you said that I needed to file a plea in absentia. Yeah, well it's not in the court file. Uh, and the plea in absentia does require fingerprints pursuant right. to statute. Is it more detailed than the one that I presented? Aside from the fingerprints? I mean my biggest concern is it doesn't include what he's pleading out to. It's a, um it's okay, Lexi. Um, okay, um, I'll do a more detailed one, Your Honor. Can we reset for um, tomorrow? Well, <laughs> let me look at my calendar. Or whatever day doesn't matter. Um, how about I've got a criminal status motion hearing docket on January 29th. Would that be enough time for you to get the fingerprints and uh, maybe do an additional page that would include um, the terms of the agreement? I, I think I have another a detailed, more detailed one from another county that uh, where they uh, sent me a sample. So uh, I believe that probably will be more along the lines of uh, um, what, you, what you need, Your Honor. And yes, that should be enough time. All right, any objection to that, Ms. Benia? No objection, Your Honor. All right, so we'll continue it to January 29th at 9 o'clock for a plea in absentia. Okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, Mr. Amster, try to have that filed before the morning of the hearing. That way we'll be able to see it. Yes, Judge. All right. All right. Thank you. And I think the reason your client has probably been waving at us is because his audio has never connected. Okay. I'll, so he, he can't hear what's going on. It's just, I'm glad he didn't hear it. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Amster. We'll see you. Uh, you'll have to contact my uh, judicial assistant to get the Zoom codes for that, okay? All right, thank you. By the way, Judge, uh, have you ever been told who you sound like, what celebrity you sound like? Um, yes. John Malkovic? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. John Malkovich. All right. Uh, Ms. Benia, anything else from you? No, Judge. All right. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Your Honor. You have a great day. Thanks. You too. That'll end. President Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment.